if you are an outside sales rep and you are not meticulously tracking your mileage and your expenditures for business, you're leaving a lot of coin on the table. Well, good afternoon. I'm Larry Hendrick with The Magnum Life at www.themagnumlife.com. And in this selling series, we've talked quickly about cold calling. We've talked about preparations for cold calls briefly. And I would like to expand on that because of some conversations that have happened recently. But as a result of what I did yesterday, I'm going to shift gears a little bit today and do kind of a tip. <laughs> yesterday, I spent, I don't know, a couple of hours putting together all of my mileage figures for 2011 for income tax purposes. And I had had a conversation not too long ago with a sales rep who kind of blew off keeping the records like that. And that kind of came back to mind. So let me tell you my little story and then I'll tell you his little story and when then we'll conclude from there. My mileage is pretty complicated because the company that I did work for most of last year did a partial reimbursement. So only the portion that was not reimbursed is deductible up to the amount or for the difference between what I was reimbursed and what the IRS allows. And so you have to track those miles in one way so that I can determine the difference. Then there are other miles that were just completely unreimbursed and I have to track those because I get full reimbursement for those. And then there's medical miles and that's a different number from the IRS, if I recall correctly. I've got to look at the tax again this year. So mine's pretty complicated because you get partial reimbursement for some, full reimbursement for others, and then there's medical, which is a different deal. All of it that has to be documented. The IRS is more than happy to give you that deduction as long as it's documented. My procedure, I keep a program on my phone. Before that was a different phone. Before that was my palm. <laughs> I've always had a program to make it very easy to document that. And when I get into the car, it takes a matter of 8 to 10 seconds to record my, mile, my mileage. At the end of the day, I come in, it takes another 8 to 10 seconds to record my mileage. Now, since I worked with a lot of sales reps in the field, I also kept records on who I worked with, where we went, what we did, because then I would have some documentation for when I had a conversation with maybe their manager or supervisor within the company. Then even if I didn't have that conversation for a month, I could still document it, tell them exactly the results we had had, what the sales rep needed to work on, or what I had assigned them to do, or what we had jumped up as far as prospects. Any of those kinds of documents were there. Now, back to the sales rep that I'd had the conversation with. I brought up doing keeping track of mileage for income tax purposes, because especially if you drive a lot, and it's not unusual for an outside salesperson to drive 25 to 50,000 miles, depending on the territory and the size of the territory. I cover the state of Texas, put a lot of miles on. He said, oh, I deduct it from my income taxes. And I said, well, how do you document that? And he said, no, I don't. I said, well, then how do you deduct it? And he says, I just figure out a number and deduct it. I said, you realize, of course, that if you get audited, you have to have all that meticulously documented. Yeah, well, if I get audited, I'll put it all together then. <laughs> he obviously has not ever done that because it's a lot of work to put that information together, especially in a form and a format that the IRS will accept and say, oh, okay, yeah, we'll let you take that deduction. Keep track of it, 10 seconds in the morning, 10 seconds in the afternoon. It's just not that hard. If you need to make a few notes, that's another 20 seconds. Even if it's in a spiral notebook, a little small pocket notebook, just kept in the dash of your, you know, in the dash of your car or in your glove box or something, 
It's so much easier. Now, other expenditures. Let me just mention this right quick because there are some circumstances and it and there's you know ways that it has to to function in order for it to be deductible, but there are ways for taking say a prospect or a customer out for a meal. Some of that might be deductible. There are thresholds that have to be met and some other things within your business deductions, but with business mileage and things like that, expenditures for uh, meals or gifts or something like that, that could add up to be a considerable amount of deductions. Now, let me make one more comment about the mileage that I just thought of, and since this is all unscripted and we're just talking, uh, I want to throw this in. I had for years kept every expense on my vehicle plus mileage. At the end of the year, I would always figure it both ways because you can deduct all your actual expenses or you can deduct mileage. Every single time I did it, it was better to deduct mileage than actual expenses because mileage takes into consideration the ownership of the car, the wear and tear on the car, the replacement cost of the car that's accrued through the life of the car. There's more than just gas and oil and tires that's built into that. Now, if you take and figure all of that in, it comes out pretty close. But why, if you don't have to or don't want to, I, I still keep all of that meticulously just because I'm a nerd that way. Can't help it. But I always just take the mileage deductions. It's much faster, it's much quicker, it's much easier, and it always comes out to be the best for me on the income taxes. Well, there's your quick tip. Spend 20, 25 seconds a day keeping records. It's just easier. And while we're at it, just remember, let's be safe out there.